I just got back from GaryCon and I had a blast. Hi everyone, Michael here from Night Noon Games, and I just thought I'd fill you in on what games I played and who I met and the time I had. So a little bit of backstory, Gary Khan was started by Gary Gygax's son, Luke Gygax, as a way to commemorate his father. Every year, people descend on Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, in order to play games and celebrate the life of Gary Gygax. I've actually never been to a game con before, and neither had my two friends, Jesse or Elliot, who came along with me. We left on Wednesday in the early afternoon from Denver International Airport, and when we were boarding the flight, I noticed a guy wearing an old school essentials shirt. I said, hey man, you going to Gary Con? And he said, oh yeah, and I gave him a nice fist bump. It turns out I went to talk to the guy later, and it turns out it was Luke Stratton, the creator of Pirate Borg. That was pretty cool. You might remember one of the first videos I made about playing D&D solo on an airplane. I figure if I can play it solo, why not play D&D with some buddies? So as we all sat down in a road together on our Southwest flight, I busted out my zines for Goons and Ghosts, a rules light ghost busting game by J.P. Coover. This game was great for playing on an airplane because you only needed 2d6 and it's super fast and super fun. We played for an hour and a half and it made the flight fly by. We landed at O'Hare, we drove to Lake Geneva, and then we checked in at the hotel. Of course, we knew that a ton of other people would be there, so we started mingling. And we eventually met up with Kelsey Dion, the writer of Shadow Dark, and a bunch of other people from the Shadow Dark Discord server. We all just chatted and hung out for a while, but we didn't play any games. The next morning at 9 a.m., my buddy Elliot and I were signed up for a game of Avatar Legends. I'd never played Avatar Legends before, so what better time to do so than at a con? Frankly, and you're gonna hear this a lot throughout this video, Elliot and I had a blast. I'd never before played even a Power by the Apocalypse system, and I thought that system was perfectly suited for Avatar. I played an Earthbender and had a ton of fun doing silly Earthbending things, and we were able to accomplish our goals and win the day. I think one thing that really made this adventure so exciting was the DM was excellent. His name is Eric Wallace. I don't know what his deal was, but he was very engaging and very energetic, and it was a great way to start off the con. Right after that, Jesse met up with Elliot and I, and we were on to our first game of Shadow Dark. This one was being run by Steve Winter. He used to work at TSR back in their heyday and has written a ton of D&D modules. It was so cool to play with him. He had a great attitude and was just a lot of fun. However, our table, I feel like it had a hard time clicking at first. So it wasn't really until after a break that we took in the middle of the game that we all started gelling together and we started having a lot of fun. I think part of the reason that it started slowly too was Steve's idea was he was running three sessions of this story and we were the first group. So we were playing act one and then we were turning our character sheets in. Later on, another group would take those same character sheets and they would run act two and then they would turn in their character sheets and eventually move on to act three with entirely new players. While we ended up coming to a decent conclusion, I thought it started slow because it really was a three session adventure that we only got to play one session of. But I would definitely play it again and I thought Steve was a great DM. Now, the thing with GaryCon is it's more than just playing games. It was after this game that I went to a seminar called Running Successful Kickstarters. There were people there representing the Crooked Moon Kickstarter campaign that happened last year and Troll Lord Games. Penny Dragon Games, and Frog God Games. I thought that these folks had a lot to add about running a Kickstarter. And if you don't know this already, I am planning a Kickstarter for later this year. I definitely learned a thing or two that I'm going to implement in my marketing and execution of the Kickstarter just from attending this panel. So I thought it was really helpful. It was getting late on Thursday and I didn't have any more games scheduled, but I was still itching to play. So I put a call out to the Shadow Dark Discord server and found a bunch of people to meet me at an open play table to play another set of Goons and Ghosts. There were six players and myself, and we ran through an adventure where we cleared a bunch of ghosts out of a library. And again, we all had a ton of fun. One of the guys that I met, Scott from the Discord server, said he'd never played a 2D6 system before. It was really exciting to introduce a new system to him that wasn't just straight D&D. &D. So I felt good about that because I felt like I was helping show some people that role-playing games didn't just mean D&D, &D, that there were a ton more out there that you could be playing. Then Friday morning rolls around, 
and I had scheduled myself to DM an 8 a.m. session of Shadow Dark. In this session, I ran my new adventure, Aulon Raid in the Temple of Ord. It's actually part of a special preview issue of a zine that I'm kicking off. If you want to get a copy of it for yourself, if you just sign it to my newsletter, I will send you a copy, and you're also gonna be kept up to date on what's going on with the Kickstarter, which we hope to launch later this year. Later on in the week, I also went to get Attack the Light Blessed, so hopefully that bodes well for the Kickstarter later. I had a ton of fun DMing this early session. Now, I was afraid at first that scheduling something for 8 a.m. was a mistake, but I had a full table. Three of them were named John, which I just thought was funny. And only one of them had ever played Shadow Dark before, so it was really cool to introduce a bunch of new people to Shadow Dark. And of course, I had play tested this adventure a few times before, and it was interesting to see how this group approached all the problems in different ways than I had with previous groups. After that was another seminar called Femme Facing in TTRPGs and Kicking Butt. It was a panel of all women in the TTRPG scene, and they all talked about the issues they had as women in the scene and how they had to overcome obstacles and what they were doing to make the scene more inclusive and accepting of everyone. And it was so cool. I think my favorite person on this panel was Banana Chan. I didn't know it, but she's actually written a bunch of stuff that I've read. She contributed to Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, and she even wrote the Scooby-Doo version of Betrayal, which is a board game that I love and I also love Scooby-Doo. I was lucky enough to run into her in the hallway later and chat a little bit about what she's doing and all of that cool stuff. And they were just like really cool. Now, I think the most heartwarming thing that happened during this panel and probably the entire time was in the Q&A section, there was an older gentleman at the back of the auditorium who rose his hand and he was called on. He prefaced his question by saying, hey, I just want to let you know, I've never played D&D at all in my life. And what he meant by that is he was playing those role-playing games that Dave Arneson and Gary Gygax were playing before D&D was actually a thing. So this is an OG Grognard, right? And he said, what I love about this panel is that this is what we dreamed of 50 years ago. This is where we dreamed the industry would go and you all are the future of this industry. I thought it was incredible. He was much more eloquent than that even, and it had panelists crying, and people in the audience were crying, and even I was tearing up a lot, because I think it's easy to see that there is sexism in this hobby, and a lot of that is placed on these older players. It's just, oh, they're just an old Grognard, so they must not like women. So seeing someone that's been in the hobby for as long as the hobby has existed, reach out and say, I love seeing women in this hobby. I love seeing women succeed in this industry. I think it really meant a lot and it was a really cool thing to be a part of. Later on Friday, it was time to move on to more Shadow Dark. Doc from the Discord server was putting together a bit of an impromptu session and Doc's style with this is just total randomization. You get handed out random characters and they could be any level. For instance, I was level three, but we also had the level 10 wizard in the party which was super cool, and it was just chaos. And I mean that in the best of ways. Now, I've got to apologize to Doc a little bit since I wasn't as tuned in as I could be, but there were like eight other people playing at the table. So I didn't feel too bad when I went to talk to someone else for a few minutes and then went on a coffee run for everyone. But part of the reason why I feel like I didn't have to be super engaged is because I knew I'd be playing with Doc again before the weekend was over. In fact, I was scheduled to play with him later that night. Along with my buds, Jesse and Elliot, we ran through a session with Doc and had a ton of fun. Again, this was all randomization. We had random characters and I think it was cool. It was a great way to run a con game where just things were happening and all of us were at the dice's mercy. I don't think I would use that amount of randomization if I was trying to tell a longer overarching story, but it, again, it worked really well in a con setting. Then late Friday night, Jesse wanted to run something. We found a few other Shadow Dark fans, again, mostly from the Discord server or people that we'd already met at the con, and we said, come on, meet us in this room. We're running a Shadow Dark session. The gauntlet was a ton of fun. Everyone in the game plays a prisoner on a prisoner transport that gets ambushed and then tries to escape. Again, this is something that Jesse's writing for our upcoming Shadow Dark Kickstarter campaign. So you should definitely subscribe to the newsletter in the links below to get more information about that. 
the way this adventure shook out, I think I literally died on the last round of combat and we had only one participant survive the gauntlet, which is just how a gauntlet is supposed to be. So again, it was a ton of fun. After that, I had to get back to bed because I had another early game at 9 a.m. on Saturday. Now that morning, I was invited to play in a Shadowed Art game that Kelsey herself was DMing, but I really wanted to try out this other game that I had signed up for called Wander Home. It's a storytelling game, so it actually doesn't involve any dice roll. And the experience was absolutely incredible. The GM we had, her name was Liz, was just so good at adding to the story and playing off what myself and the other two characters were giving off. It was awesome. If you haven't checked out Wander Home, I highly suggest that you do. I might have to make a video that goes more in depth into this later on, but it got to the point where I was like on the verge of tears a few times because I was so invested in the story we were telling and it really felt powerful and important. I'm not just gonna say it was a great time, but it really was a great experience. After Wander Home, it was time for me to DM another game of my Shadow Dark adventure, Aulon Raid in the Temple of Ore. We had one no-show to this game, which was a little bit disappointing, and then two other folks that played were a little bit not as engaged as they could be, but it wasn't a big deal because the other two guys were super fun to play with. One of them even knew that this adventure was based on a mountain goat song, so he wore a mountain goat shirt, which was super fun. And most of these people were brand new to Shadow Dark, and I could tell they also DM'd. So I offered to really go over the mechanics that I was doing when I was playing them to help them understand the rules. I think that's important when you're DMing a new system for people, especially if they're interested in maybe DMing it themselves or learning more about it. You've got to help them understand things like morale checks because it's not always obvious or random encounter checks and all that stuff because it's a new game and not a ton of people have played Shadow Dark before. So I hope that I was able to help these folks learn the game and have fun. Right after that was the seminar that I think I was most looking forward to, and it was called Kickstarting It Old School. The panel consisted of Kelsey Dion from Shadow Dark, Ben Milton from Nave Fame, and Gavin Norman from Old School Essentials and Dolmanwood. The three of them talked all about Kickstarter strategies and trends in Kickstarters, especially in the OSE, and they answered a lot of questions from the crowd that were all really helpful. I think the coolest part of this seminar was that Ben had compiled a ton of statistics about how OSR Kickstarters had been doing compared to 5e Kickstarters and RPG Kickstarters in general. Now, I'm not gonna ruin it for you by sharing the findings, especially because he said he was going to be making his own video about it on his Questing Beast channel, but suffice it to say that Kickstarters of OSR games are just kicking ass. People are more interested in this scene now than they ever have been. And a lot of that, at least what this panel was saying, could be attributed to people just having 5e fatigue. D&D 5e has been out for 10 years now, and people are starting to say, hey, what else is out there that I can explore? And moving into the OSR is an easy jump for a lot of those people, especially if you're jumping into a game like Shadow Dark. The next game I had on the docket was actually being DM'd by Kelsey and Doc, which was pretty exciting. It was called the Shadow Dome Thunderdark. And this adventure had actually been sourced through a bunch of people on the Discord server and is now available for a free download. I'll put a link down in the description below. So if you want to check out the Shadow Dome Thunderdark, you totally can. Everyone that played in the game got a free shirt and a free zine of the adventure, which I thought was pretty rad, but you can play it too, even if you weren't there. Now, the way this adventure worked was there were two teams of four people. Myself and Elliot were on one team, one guy that was in my previous game that day was on that team. And then we had a fourth guy too. Kelsey started DMing for us and we are crawling through this dungeon, having encounters, finding loot, finding treasure in our quest to find an angel feather that combined with another angel feather would grant someone a wish. The other team was searching for the other angel feather. Now, how it was supposed to work was about halfway through the session, Kelsey and Doc were going to switch which team they were DMing for. Unfortunately, Kelsey started feeling real sick and could not finish DMing for the other side, which was a huge bummer. And I know Kelsey felt absolutely terrible about it, 
but I know she's gonna try to do something to make it up to those folks. I think Doc stepped in and really did a great job, but I think the really unfortunate part of this adventure is it ends by hitting the two groups against each other. I don't really like player versus player encounters, and I'm not trying to rub any salt in the wound of the other team, but my team did get more magic items. I think the randomized characters we got were a little bit stronger. Everyone was level three in this one, at least, so it wasn't levels all over the place, but we looked like we were gonna come out victorious. Now, it all came down to one die roll, which was really exciting. They had three of their four players down and all four of our players were still up. There was one opposed to check to see whether the two players with the two feathers were going to be able to each grab the feather from the other person. And the craziest thing happened. The person on the other team rolled a nat 20, but they had a minus one in their decks, so it was actually a 19. Whereas the person on our team rolled a 19 and they had a plus two on their decks, so it ended up being a 21. Unfortunately, even a nat 20, a 21 beats it. But, and I think this was a great call on Doc's part because it made it feel like there wasn't really a loser as much as there could have been. He said, because that's a nat 20, the feathers combine and both teams get one wish. So I'm there with my group and we say, hey, what's our wish gonna be? And obviously, since I'm a big softy, I said, I think our wish has to be that Kelsey's tummy feels better. And of course, when the other group heard that, they were like, yeah, that has to be our wish too. We all recorded a video where we wish that Kelsey's tummy felt better and we called it a game. I had a ton of fun. I think everyone was really engaged. Kelsey did an awesome job when I was playing with her and Doc did a great job too when he was handling the whole group. But that wasn't all for Saturday night. At about 10.30, I got bullied into DMing another game of Shadow Dark. So this one, I was just going to fly by the seat of my pants on it. So I used my own roll tables from Blades and Heart. There's a link to that scene down in the description. It's just $1. And came up with an adventure where these six adventurers were gonna have to go after a goblin lich. That game lasted about two hours. I created a bunch of randomized magic items for them since they were all level one characters and they took down this goblin lich and its horde of zombies. It was really cool. I think it worked really well and it was so much fun. I had a blast. You might be thinking, oh, that must be the end of the con, right? You've already listed so many more games. No, I'm on to game 14, which was Sunday morning and was a session of WHPA, Weird Heroes of Public Access. This is a game written by the Reverend Joy Royale. It's rule of light and it's crazy and it's bonkers. The premise is you play the host of a public access television show and you also have a secret superpower that can sometimes activate. It was a great group of guys. The guy who was DMing right stuff in the Mutant Crawl Classics and Dungeon Crawl Classic scene. His name was Julian and he made it a ton of fun. I was playing this swarmy full of himself news anchor and we ended up battling Sasquatch because apparently the bad guys always Sasquatch. And it was a super great introduction to the game because it was my first time playing. I'm really excited to run this for some other friends sometime down the line. And that was it for Gary Con, although that wasn't it for the games I was playing on this trip. That was because I spent all of Monday with some family I had in Chicago, two uncles and an aunt. They have never played a role-playing game before, but they were all alive in the 80s, so I thought they might like to play a ghost-busting game. So again, it was back to Goons and Ghosts. And for first-time RPG players, I think they did a great job, and I had a ton of fun running the game for them. So that was 14 games this whole trip. It was crazy. It lasted over 33 hours. There was so much other stuff that happened. I met Ben Milton. I met a bunch of people from the Arcane Library Discord server. I met Bunny and Zane from Unnatural Selections. I drank a ton of Spotted Cow beer, which is delicious. And me and my buddies just had a total awesome time. It was so cool. If you're thinking about going to a con, Gary Con was great. And I think I might absolutely have to go next year because it was just so much fun. And that was my experience for Gary Con. I'm super excited to get to my next con, which is going to be Gen Con in August. I've never been before, but 70,000 people are going. It's going to be insane. I'm really excited for it. To keep up on what's going on with Night Noon Games, including getting a free copy of that Shadow Dark adventure that I mentioned earlier, make sure to sign up for my mailing list down in the description below. Down there, you can also find links to all my social media, 
and all of that good stuff too. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you to like and subscribe to this video. Until our next adventure, stay inspired and keep those dice rolling. Thanks for watching.